Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where OP's boss steals his Super Bowl tickets from him, so OP gets sweet revenge. Our next Reddit post is from Brands and On. I'm a huge 49ers fan, the rabid all day tailgate in the parking lot type. A few years ago, we made it back to the Super Bowl. I was working at a consulting firm with a handful of accounts that I would interact with directly. One client in particular knew how big of a 49ers fan I was. I was the day-to-day -day lead on his account. He really liked working with me and we became friends, often grabbing drinks or dinner after our meetings. He had access to a pair of extra company seats to the game and, as a thank you, wanted to give them to me as a gift. He passed the tickets over to the partner on the account, who I'll refer to as Dickhead Partner, to be given to me as a surprise. The game came and went, we lost, it sucked. The next time me and the client met, we went to get drinks afterwards and he mentioned, Hey, by the way, why didn't you go to the game? I heard someone else was in your seats. I asked, what game? And he said, the Super Bowl. Confused, I answered, I didn't have seats to the Super Bowl. He told me that he gave dickhead partner a pair of his company tickets for me as a gift so I could attend. I had zero idea what he was talking about. He looked shocked, told me to quietly ask around about it and get back to him. When I was back in the office the next week, I found out through one of the secretaries that dickhead partner had given a pair of Super Bowl tickets to another one of his clients as a gift from our company. I might have let this sort of thing go to keep the peace under different circumstances, but these were seats on the 30-yard line to see the effing 49ers play in the Super Bowl. I was pissed. I considered confronting dickhead partner myself, but I realized it was the client who had noticed that I wasn't there in the first place. So if I let him handle it, there would be no blowback on me. So I texted the client, Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for thanking of me with those seats. It appears the tickets were given to another one of our firm's clients. He texted back right away in all caps. Are you kidding me? Then he said, Pretend I never told you. Let me handle this. He followed up with me about formulating a plan. A few days later, we were asked to come down for a meeting in their office. The client requested the partner be present, which wasn't entirely unusual. So dickhead partner and I hopped a flight the next week and headed over to their office. Little did dickhead partner know, my client had orchestrated a wonderfully awkward little show to catch him red-handed. When we entered the conference room, it was all the usual suspects, along with one woman in her 30s who we didn't recognize. My client immediately makes introductions. Dickhead partner, this is Stephanie such and such, VP from another department. She wanted to sit in on this meeting. Oh, OP, I'm sure you must already know her from the Super Bowl. She then responds as she goes to shake my hand. Oh, I don't think so. Did we meet there? I'm sorry if I forgot. The client responds, Geez, Steph, how much did you have to drink? They were sitting right next to you. The client looks at me and I say, Sorry, but I wasn't there. Are you thinking of someone else? At this point, dickhead partner is looking visibly uncomfortable, probably trying to come up with an excuse. He starts with a, Uh, when Stephanie says, No, so-and-so from this other company were in the other seats. By the way, I was wondering why we gave company seats to those guys. Is there a project that we're working with them on that I don't know about? And for context, they were obviously not working together. They were in completely different industries. It would be like Coca-Cola partnering with John Deere. Dickhead partner lets out an uh again. And the client immediately speaks over him, asking, Dickhead partner, I gave you those tickets for OP. At this point, dickhead partner is turning bright red. He responds, Oh, uh, well, he wasn't able to make it, so he must have given the seats away to someone else, and turns to me, looking for me to cover for him. The client smirks at me. I respond, uh, what are you talking about? Client, you gave me tickets to the Super Bowl? Client suddenly raises his voice. Dickhead partner, those tickets were a personal thank you gift from me to OP. Did you give them away to someone else? Was it another client? Oh, um, maybe something got mixed up in the office? Client went quiet for what probably seemed like an eternity to dickhead partner. He then looked down, grabbed his portfolio and iPad, put them into his briefcase and said, 
I think this meeting is over. OP, it seems as if I owe you a thank you gift. Let's go to lunch. Stephanie, you're welcome to join. Dickhead partner, I need to reevaluate our relationship. Please go back home and expect to hear from us next week. Dickhead partner suggests that he would like to join us for lunch, presumably to do damage control, and Stephanie sternly tells him, I don't think that's a good idea. Then, she asks the front desk to see Dickhead partner out. As soon as Dickhead partner is in the elevator, we all break out laughing hysterically. Stephanie wasn't really a VP, just an employee at the company who the client had drafted into helping with his pre-planned meeting skit. But she did end up coming to lunch with us and was a fellow 49ers fan and was a total blast to hang out with. On our way to the restaurant, I got a desperate text from Dickhead Partner saying I needed to cover for the firm and that we could discuss things when I got back. I replied, yes, we need to talk, but I'll see what I can do. Client told me to wait a couple of hours and then respond to him. 1. To expect invoices for the resale value of the Super Bowl tickets. Resale value is way above face value. It was over $10,000, as well as our lunch. The client picked a pricey spot and made a big show of overspending and that he expected them to be paid immediately. Two, expected that I be given a direct apology. Three, expected a written apology to his company for what he considered theft. And four, he will only interact with me or another one of our firm's partners. Never dickhead partner. The whole thing caused a stir with the other partners, and I actually came off looking great, because it appeared that I had made a good faith effort to save the client for the firm, despite being the victim in this situation. The client would be transferred to another partner, which meant dickhead partner lost his profit share on any work with them. Oh, and the other partners in the firm made dickhead partner pay the invoices back out of his salary. In retrospect, I really have no idea what the hell this guy was thinking. Did he seriously believe the client would just not notice me not thanking him for Super Bowl tickets? Anyway, the well was kind of poison for me there long term because dickhead partner wasn't going anywhere. I left the firm a few months later for a much better position. The client ultimately terminated their relationship with that firm a year later. He actually now works with a good friend of mine at a competing firm. I'm still pissed that I missed out on seeing the Super Bowl, even though we lost. I'm hoping that we make it back this year so I can finally go to one in person. Go Niners! Yeah, I'm with you OP. What exactly was this guy's plan here? Why would he think that you would just never mention free Super Bowl tickets to the guy who got them for you? At the very least, he should have pulled you aside and been like, look, I screwed you over, but you have to lie for the company or you're fired or something like that. But I guess he was sleazy enough to steal your tickets, but too much of a coward or too stupid to confront you about it afterwards. What a doofus. Our next Reddit post is from Spongebob No Pants. Last summer, I bought a house trailer and decided to rent it out. It needed some work, so I posted two months free rent for putting carpet down in the living room, hooking up the hot water heater, and putting in a toilet. I got a nice couple with a newborn willing to do it. Great, we had no lease and it was month to month. They paid no security deposit and rent was $4.50 a month. They did the work, so I didn't ask for rent for two months, and everything was fine. Side note, there's a few little state laws that come into play here. If you don't pay rent for three consecutive months, you're considered a squatter, which means the landlord doesn't have to fix the property and can actually padlock it and deny you entry. If you're on house arrest and get formally evicted, you could be violated for it. Also, you can be formally evicted even if you've already moved out so the landlord can get rent due. Fast forward five months and they still haven't paid rent. Yeah, they had a newborn and they were young and they didn't have a lot of money, but somehow the husband had 1500 bucks to spend on a new engine for his project car. They can afford to go out to eat and spend money on electronics, but no rent. So after that third month, I did nothing. The weather was turning cold. I didn't put in a furnace like I promised, and if they hadn't had a newborn, I would have padlocked the house. They were bragging about their tax refund. I gave them a chance to catch up, and they basically said that they knew their rights and they were in a rent strike. Illegally, I might add. You'll see that later. Then, COVID happened. The husband got laid off, so I gave him a break. When he went back to work, I asked for back rent again, and I was told to F off. I finally had enough. 
I told them they had 14 days to get out, or I was doing a formal eviction, and seeing as how he was on house arrest, he knew what that meant. Honestly, I was trying to keep him from having to go back to jail and keep an eviction off their record. I was trying to be nice and civil. So they left and I cut my losses, until I checked the property. Everything they put in, they removed. Everything they got free rent for was gone. I got pissed and filed for a formal eviction. It didn't go as they hoped. They said that I didn't provide heat, so they went on a rent strike. Only, they didn't file that with the courts or hold the money aside. They just thought they could stop paying rent. What they put into the trailer was less than the rent. The judge agreed with me. Then, the husband started slamming my character, so I said, Well, you didn't tell me that you were going to be going on house arrest when you rented the property. Before, the judge looked bored, but with this, he perked up. He asked them if that was true. They responded that it was, and the judge said that he was ready to make his ruling. I received 15 months back rent at 450 bucks a month, and $2,000 in damages because the way that they removed the stuff caused a lot of damage. And as for the husband, the judge said that he had no choice but to turn the eviction over to his parole officer. Fast forward to this month. The husband's house arrest was violated and he was arrested. They actually... <laughs> they actually had the nerve to ask me to speak on his behalf. I didn't. The ruling was that his remaining six months had to be spent in jail. They also had a bad eviction on their record and they owe me money. Next time, know the law before you try to play games. OP, I'm surprised you didn't show up to speak on his behalf. Just speak against him, not for him. Like, what were they expecting you to say? Officer, this is an upstanding citizen who owes me like $4,000. Please don't send him to jail because I need him to go to work to pay me back, I guess. Our next Reddit post is from 21st Monkey. This revenge wasn't mine, but I was lucky enough to see it happen. Last night, I headed to a local chain auto parts store looking for a particular component for my wife's temperamental car. As my young daughter and I headed inside, there was some douchebag hanging out in front of the shop, standing next to a heavily modified car. Obnoxiously large spoiler, tons of stickers, and enough bass pouring from it to damage nearby concrete. He was yelling over the music, lecturing some poor employee about the magic under his open hood. The employee looked desperate to get away. I went inside and browsed for a few minutes. Okay, honestly, I stared blankly at the components and tried to comprehend what I needed. Then, the douchebag entered. I could tell the exact moment that he came in because there was a flood of bass and his loud voice, which did not lower in volume as the door closed behind him. His speech was eloquent, with the F word being probably every second or third word. A real peach. The unfortunate employee had followed Douchebag inside, and now Douchebag was making demands about his car needs. And bro, I need that effing dingle hopper like effing yesterday, you know what I mean? I rolled my eyes, and I hoped that my daughter was learning a life lesson here. Abruptly, there came a shout from Douchebag, even louder than he'd been before. Dude, what the F, bro? I reflexively poked my head out of the aisle, trying to see what was up. Another customer, some poor bastard, apparently had the audacity to be up at the counter at the same time as Douchebag. And now, Douchebag was squaring off with him. What the F is your problem, bro? I, uh, sorry, I was just trying to... Do you want to effing go? At this point, I have to note that I'm not certain what poor bastard did to spark that reaction. There was some little product on the floor between the two guys. A little flashlight or a carabiner, I think. So, I think that poor bastard might have accidentally dropped it or knocked it off the rack or something. Whatever happened, douchebag was completely in poor bastard's face. Arms extended and chest puffed out. Poor bastard was shrinking away and trying to avoid being beaten to a pulp. As he tried to apologize, he began to stutter. This just fueled the douchebag. Ha <laughs> ha, you effing little R-word. Look at you, you gonna cry now, bro? <laughs> The poor bastard backed off, hands up to ward off a potential attack. As soon as he was clear, he booked it out of the store. Douchebag turned back to the employee, who was standing behind the counter looking shell-shocked. Can you believe that little turd, bro? Effing R-word thinks he can step. Man!
At that point, a manager appeared next to the employee on the other side of the counter. The manager said, Hey, so that was a 95, right? F and A, bro. You got it? We don't, but a warehouse in the next town over does. I already went ahead and ordered it. Great. When can I pick it up? Not so fast. I didn't order it for you. I went ahead and ordered it for the store. And after that uncalled for behavior, you are not allowed to shop here anymore. What the F? See, that's the behavior that we're talking about. By the way, while I was on the computer, I saw that there was three more dingle hoppers within a six hour radius. I bought them all. Looks like you're out of luck. I can't believe you. Further, I'm going to ask you once to cut out the language in front of the lady, and he gestures towards my daughter. Uh. Now get out and don't ever come back. The douchebag stared for a long moment and then stomped out the door. He peeled out of the parking lot with a screech. The manager was still at the register when I went to check out. I said, wow, some people, right? He said, story of my life, unfortunately. So I have to ask, did you really buy all the parts that he needs? Nah, I did a search and there are none available. The odd part is that not many of them are made, so you just can't get them. But now, he thinks that he screwed himself out of them, and I get to feel like I stuck up for that poor guy. That was r slash pro revenge, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.